YouTube, what's good, y'all? Welcome to the channel. Happy Monday. If you're joining us live and if you're on the replay squad, happy whatever day it is that you're watching this. We got a good one for you guys today. Um, if you haven't checked out my life update slash vlog video, you definitely want to do that. Um, but just to give you an overview, I've recently partnered with a phenomenal company named UAI and they have a really, really cool tool named Mind Studio, which will allow you to build AI apps in minutes, y'all, in min literally in minutes with no code. If you know me, you know I'm a Wix user when it comes to web design. I don't code, I haven't coded, been a little interested in it, but haven't really had the time to learn and I haven't really had a need to. So Mind Studio kind of keeps that going, allowing you to build really cool, really useful AI tools with no code and do it in minutes. I think on average, the average uh, tool takes about 30 minutes or less. It could take longer if you get more complex and it could take shorter, but on average, it they take about 30 minutes or less. So it looks like we have 11 viewers on here. It's good to see everyone. I'm just gonna pull up the comments. Yeah, let me know where you're tuning in from. Just drop a comment, hit the like button while you're here. I'd appreciate that. And we're going to jump into this tutorial. You don't you don't want to miss this, guys. This is going to be really exciting. So yeah, just let us know where you're tuning in from. And we'll jump in. We'll jump in. Cool, cool. All right, guys. So I'm getting ready to introduce the CEO of UAI. And he's a really cool guy, man. And you know he had to be cool if I, if I partnered up with him. Um, so... I'm introducing you to the Dimitri Shapiro. Looks like we got a like. So the Dimitri Shapiro. So Dimitri, he is the CEO at UAI. Prior to UAI, Dimitri led the product team at Google Social Media, Social Machine Learning Teams, and was a CTO at MySpace. Dimitri also previously founded two venture back companies, VO Networks and Econix Systems. So Dimitri, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How you doing? So good to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, no doubt, no <clears throat> doubt. I'm, I'm welcome, doing welcome. well. I'm I'm excited to to build some AIs with you here live. Awesome, so, awesome. Sounds kind of like crazy, we... right? Like that, like we're gonna build some some AIs, like more than one. Yeah. We only yeah, have an hour, absolutely. and so yep. I think we're gonna demonstrate that that thirty minutes is uh, can be much shorter than than 30 minutes like we're gonna build them in like a couple of minutes each awesome awesome let me just say hello to bicky bickford from new hampshire welcome welcome and we have una from serbia welcome and we also have link from nigeria welcome guys we appreciate you guys for tuning in and anybody who's watching if you have questions that come up as dimitri's is showing us how to build these AIs, drop them in the comments and we'll make sure to get those questions answered so uh, without further ado, Dimitri, I'll hand it over to you and you can kind of um, show us how to build these AIs. Yeah, so I'm going to use a few slides just to set things up for folks so that you understand what's happening here. And then we're going to go flying live and, and build some AIs. Awesome. <clears throat> I apologize. I seem to be losing my voice. So you guys are going to get That's all good. The, the teenage Dimitri, I think. <laughs> with the cracking voice. Ah, oh, can you see my screen? Okay. Yep. Just give me yeah. one second. I'm gonna add add it here. Um. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so the way today we use AI, this is ChatGPT, is we interact directly with ChatGPT. So I assume that folks on the call <clears throat> watching the video. Um, have tried using ChatGPT or Anthropic Claude or Google Bard or any of these other large language models. You just go directly to their website, and uh, in this case, you know, chat.openai.com, and start you know typing prompts at it. And people get quite creative with the types of prompts that they are you know using. There are lots of people out on social media posting you know really long lists of prompts. You can just sort of get their file and find the right prompt for the job and copy and paste it uh, into ChatGPT, or even worse, start typing them, you know, using your fingers. You are a blog post copywriter with 20 years of experience. You know, I will provide ideas, yada, yada, yada. Uh, while this is amazing that you can type these kinds of things into ChatGPT and it 
helps you write blog posts. Um, we believe there's a much better way of using uh, these you know, large language models, these uh, generative AI models. And that is to abstract these models with AIs that are specifically made for the various things that you are trying to do. Just like on mobile, we have a concept of there's an app for that. Uh, another way of putting it is use the right tool for the job. Uh, we believe AI should work the same way. Where behind the scenes, you're still using ChatGPT and Anthropic Claude and Google Palm, but here you're interacting directly with an AI that is created to be a blog post writer or a vacation planner or a parenting co-pilot, etc. And so we're going to make some of these AIs uh, again uh, in just a moment. And so we're going to use our tool called Mind Studio. You can go to mindstudio.ai to. Uh, find it and, and browse around. Today we have already over 2,000 AIs that have been created uh, for all kinds of purposes. As you can see here, there's like AIs for creators and content and writing and parenting and business and all kinds of things. You guys can browse around them. Again, as we build some, uh, we'll, we'll showcase some of the ones that we've picked here as well. <clears throat> and there are really countless use cases of what you can use Mind Studio for. You can build AIs just for yourself to automate things that you do on a daily basis, or build AIs for other people, for consumers, for small and medium-sized business, for enterprises. These are just some of the types of AIs we've already seen built on the platform. I'll quickly hey, Dimitri, not to cut you off, um, are you sharing something other than the slide deck right now? No. Okay, it's just, is it on the first slide? No, I've gone through a bunch of slides here. Have okay. you guys not seen any of those? It looks like it's just the first slide on my uh, end, no. so. Well, that's all right. Could you uh, switch your, uh, are you doing a screen share inside of um, Ecamm? I am. Let me stop it and okay. start it again. Okay. Let's try this. How is, how is that? Can you see my slides moving? Yes, yes, okay, we can. Okay, cool. Okay, well, great. So I already read this thing to you, so I'll quickly go back through it. This is what people type into ChatGPT to try to get ChatGPT to behave like a, uh, in this case, like a blog post copywriter, right? You got to type a lot of things into it. Uh, we think this is a better approach. Can you still see me switching my slides? Yep, through it? we great. can see it. Yeah, and so there are these AIs made specifically for doing the things that you want to do, like this parenting co-pilot, which we'll open up and play with, or blog post writer, spreadsheet analyzer, etc. And all of these large language models are simply the back ends. And so you don't have to talk directly to them. You interact with these AIs specifically made for this. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you guys how to make these AIs uh, using, again, Mind Studio. And, and so there's all kinds of use cases. As I was mentioning, let's quickly sort of go through some of these. So they, uh, there's many other categories here. I've sort of highlighted three, conversational agents, generators, and analyzers. In conversational agents, we see a bunch of people making co-pilots for various types of jobs. A bunch of you may have seen that there are now co-pilots for software developers that help software developers write code better. It's basically an assistant that knows how to write code and works in collaboration with the developer to help them write code better, faster, smarter, etc. Well, it's not just parents that could use, oh, sorry, not just developers that could use co-pilots, countless other job functions in every industry can use co-pilots. Um, and so, for example, I'll show you a parenting co-pilot. Um, but there are many other co-pilots that have been created. There are people that are creating things that are meant to be engaged with uh, by consumers and help uh, explain to the consumer a product or a service that the company offers or support reps that allow people to ask questions and not have to wait for a human support agent or things that help train people in all kinds of ways. Or uh, one of the things we'll make here in a moment is a book AI. You can take a book in, in a digital book, meaning a book that's already been digitized, you've got the text of it, and you can simply upload it and, and write a few things in a prompt, and all of a sudden that becomes a conversational book. So you can chat with the book and ask questions, and the book can answer questions really as the author and summarize things and paraphrase them and translate them to French or whatever it is, or act as a sort of master practitioner of the concepts that are explained in the book or you can create characters. You guys get the point. There's many different kinds of things you can create. 
We'll create a number of them here in, in a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the AIs we'll build. And if we have time, we'll build even more. Uh, the first one we're gonna build is an article summarizer, which will allow a user to enter a URL to you know, an article, and it'll go fetch that URL and then you know, tease out of it, basically enumerate all of the important points uh, that are you know, listed in an article. Uh, we'll then take that summarizer and we'll make it personalized. And so we'll add the capability for the AI to ask the user for how old they are, and then it'll summarize it that's you know, age appropriate, basically for target audience. Uh, we'll create a book AI, as I mentioned to you. So we'll take a book and we'll turn it into an AI and, and we'll chat with it. We'll create a data analyzer. Um, we'll take a data set that we're going to find on a website called kaggle.com that's got a bunch of data sets. You can use your own. And then we'll be able to chat with it. And again, depends on if we still have time, we'll build some more and I'll, I'll lead you through some other things. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing uh, this and I'm going to switch to uh, my browser here. And if you could just verify for me that you can see this. Marshall? Yes, we can. Yep, we can see it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and so you can go to uai.ai or mindstudio.ai. You'll land on a page that looks like this. It'll say, get started. I'm obviously already logged in. And so let me quickly sort of take you through some of the things in the page. So whatever you have in mind, you can build with Mind Studio. I already gave you a glimpse of that. Uh, we take advantage of all of the latest advancements in AI. So we are model agnostic. We support all major uh, you know, foundation models, as they're called. So OpenAI, Anthropic Cloud, Google Palm, et cetera. You don't need to write any code. Uh, and so again, I'll show you how that works. You can use your own data with these AIs. I'm going to show you where we use a, a book that I've downloaded. It's not my book. We're going to use The Art of War. That's a public domain book. But you could just as easily take any you know, text document or PDF or CSV, Excel spreadsheet, et cetera, and use those. We make it trivially easy for you once you've built it to publish your AI and make it available to the world. You can set it up either as free for consumers to use it for free, or you can charge a monthly uh, subscription uh, for using it. You get to choose uh, how much per month. And then built into it are you know, data and analytics, so you can use it to make sure you tune up your AI so it's converting and performing well, and sort of many other things here, again, that we'll experience. OK, so let's get started. I'm just going to go to My AIs, and here I'm going to say New AI. And so there are these uh, templates, as we call them, or scaffolds. As you can see, we've got a bunch of them here. There's the blank one, which is mostly what we'll use here. You can also start with a book AI scaffold. We'll use this one when we uh, take the art of war and turn it into an AI book. Uh, and again, you can read here, there's a bunch of different types of scaffolds. For this one, we're just going to start with a blank scaffold. And we're going to get into this interface. Uh, so there are three areas, three columns here, left, middle, right. The one on the right is a live terminal, so we can chat with our AI as we're building it. I tend not to use it, so I'm just going to collapse it right here on the bottom right. You can collapse these things. You can always preview your AI as you're building it using this preview draft. You can open it up in a new tab, and you can just preview your AI as you're doing it, and I like doing it that way instead. Okay, and so uh, we will come to this section in the next AI that we build, so ignore this for now. We'll simply focus on these things right here. I'm going to delete this over here. This is just some comments. And here, I'm actually going to uh, paste in some stuff so I don't have to type here on this uh, new keyboard and make all kinds of mistakes. And so I'm going to make this a little bit larger here. And so it says Assistant. Assistant is a content summarizer. User provides Assistant with content, and Assistant finds all relevant points and displays them as a bulleted list. So this is about as programming as you get with utilizing Mind Studio. OK, now I'm going to go here into this automation section. Let me make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to enable them. And you'll see what I'm going to do here. I'll do it first, and then I'll explain uh, what we did. And so I'm going to click on this little plus here. And there are these three uh, things you can do. You can send a message, collect input, or query data. We're going to say collect input. And then we get to configure it here on the right-hand side. In this input type for this summarizer, I'm going to choose scrape URL, but as you can see, you can also get the user to enter text or get the user to give you a document. 
uh, or in this case, an, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but here we're just going to say scrape URL. And then here we're going to say, uh, you know, paste a URL. And we're just going to call this content. You can call it anything you want. This is just a variable name we're going to assign to the data that comes back to uh, scraping this URL. Then we're going to hit this plus sign again, and we're going to say send message. And here we're just going to say summarize this. And in curly braces, we're going to type in the variable that we created here. See this content? We're just going to say summarize this and then content. By the way, you could get rid of this. You could just say summarize content. This is very flexible what you can do here. OK, and then we're going to go over here to model settings. And here you get to choose what model you want to use. I'm going to leave this at Claude 2. But as I mentioned, we're model agnostic. So here are four open AI models. Here are two uh, anthropic models. Here's a Google Palm model. Soon you will see many other models here. You also have other parameters here that we're not going to play with right now, but maybe later uh, in this live session, if we get to it or in another video, we'll get into these, but you can play around with these temperature parameters, response size, et cetera. And then we can take this thing and we can publish it. And here we could sort of call this, you know, simple summarizer. And I'm going to get rid of this. And, you know, you can fill in a bunch of other things, like you can give it an app icon and social media sharing image and a preview gallery of images and the preview video. I'm not going to do any of that here. Uh, I'm just going to take this landing page. I'm going to get rid of this here. And I can say, I can summarize URLs. OK, and I'm just going to publish this. Again, you could preview this while you're developing it, but let's just publish it just to show you how easy it is to, to make an AI. We just made the simple summarizer AI. The landing page isn't very pretty because we didn't spend any time on it, but you could make it much prettier than that. Uh, here's a link to it. I could literally take this link and share it anywhere, send it anywhere, post it to social media. You know, it'll show up in a Facebook feed or as a tweet uh, or embedded in my website or any of that. It's just a link. And uh, when you hit this link, you can simply open this AI. And now you get this interface. Now this says, how can I help you and paste the URL? I don't want it to say, how can I help you? So I'm just going to go back here. And over here in this message rules section, there's something called system introduction. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm just going to publish that again. And so now we've got a new one. Again, this is very iterative. You can just go and, and do that. OK, and then so here we get to paste the URL. I found a story that nobody wants to read. Social security gains come back to Earth. I don't want to read that. Uh, but summarizing it is easy. I can just paste it in here. And so what's happening now is we're going and we're grabbing that URL. And we're getting the data back from this URL. Again, we called it content. And then we pass that data, in this case, to Anthropic Claude. And it's streaming back for us a summary of this, you know, what I think is a very boring story. And we get the summary. You know, recipients will receive 3.2% cost of living adjustment, blah, 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 blah. OK, so that's cool. Again, we can open up a new thread. And we can do other stories here as well. We can sort of keep going and, and, and doing more news or bad news or whatever else is, is here. It seems like nothing but bad news in, in the news today. Uh, and you guys uh, get the point here. OK, so that's how easy it was to make uh, a summarizer. OK, now let's go and, as I said, and, and create a personalized summarizer. So I'm just going to keep working on this thing and add some capabilities to it. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is, so these AIs can have something which is called personalization. You can think of it as onboarding. When you create or when you uh, install a new application, for example, from an app store, it typically has a number of screens when you first come to the application that personalize it for you, right? It asks you a bunch of questions about yourself. And once you answer those questions, you know, the app gets configured specifically for you. We have the same kind of capability here in this personalized tab. As you can see here, it says no personalization prompts. And I can simply say add new prompt. And here we have this, you know, builder of these different types of prompts that you can create. I'm going to use this open type prompt and I'm going to say, how old are you? Okay. And we just created this simple personalization prompt that will show up the first time a user uses this uh, system, this summarizer that we're building here. And over here, we're going to go to our, uh, oh, by the way, so 
when the user answers this, when they respond to this, this creates a variable called context. And we can use that variable in here in our prompt and also in this automation section. And so here, oh, I think I lost my camera here. I might need to turn that off. I think it got overheated. I'm glad you guys are seeing my screen instead of me. It'll come back on here in a moment as I turn it on. Uh, it's really hot here today in San Diego. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the send message uh, window here, and I'm gonna say, uh, summarize this for uh, user uh, uh, of age, uh, whatever found here. By the way, this is terrible writing here. And here you can say, in these double curly braces context. Okay, and so it's gonna pass this age in here, and this is gonna summarize it for this age. And so I'm gonna say publish, and now I'm gonna open this up. And as you can see, the first thing we get is this personalized screen. Here's this other chat screen. And here I'm gonna say, you know, uh, I'm eight years old, and say next. And now when I go in and paste a link uh, in here, oops, yep, this is the one we want, and say send, what this thing should do is go and grab that link and then summarize it in a way that a seven-year-old can understand. Okay, let's see if... Uh, This looks like uh, it's actually, this might be my poor English, so this is important here again to do it. Another place you can do it is here. Uh, assistant summarizes for the specific age of user found here, context. Okay. Sometimes you have to play with this thing a bit because, again, you're working here with these foundation models and depends on uh, them. So let's paste this in here. Not sure if this is doing it for a seven-year-old. So I'm glad you guys are getting to see some of these things so you can learn to troubleshoot this as well. Summarize this contact for user of age found here. Oh, by the way, we can go to this debugger over here and we can see that this thing is, let me refresh this here. Oh, there it is, yeah. And so we can see the variables here. We can see the context. Ah, you see? This, we are getting an issue here with this story, unfortunately, that is uh, creating a, a pop-up that this thing is not able to summarize. Let's try this one instead. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, so this is much simpler, and here we're getting this uh, summary of this. Okay, so this is the simple summarizer that we've now changed into uh, a less simple one, and now you guys understand these personalization prompts. By the way, there are some AIs where people have, I've seen over 30 of these different personalization prompts that you can create. There's one which is a, a fashion recommender. It asks you a bunch of questions, sort of this or that questions utilizing this um this multiple choice one and it says do you want you know uh do you like this type of fashion or that type of fashion it does that a bunch and then it can start to be a fashion summarizer for you okay let's go back and let's create another oh by the way each one of these ais has uh this overview screen so once you publish it and share it you'll start to get analytics and so if you're monetizing it you'll see how many free trials you have and then how many people are converting to subscriptions, how many people are using it, conversion rates, and, and things like that. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, create another AI. Let's go ahead and create 
a book AI here. I'm gonna say new AI. I'm gonna use this book AI scaffold. Again, a scaffold is just something that comes already pre-configured with some things. In this thing, it just comes pre-configured with this prompt. Let's quickly look at the prompt that says the assistant is an instance of the book, insert book name here. We're actually gonna use a book called, whoops, The Art of War. So I'm just gonna fill that in here. And it says, insert the book name. Uh, sorry, uh, the, how do you, what do you want the assistant to call itself? I'm gonna call, uh, have it call itself San Su, which, who's the author of this book. It says the assistant's role is to help the user answer questions, explore the book, apply learnings, uh, if the text is not included in the book, say, I don't know, etc. Again, you can modify all of this and add things to it as you play around with it, but this works really well. Now, over here, instead of personalize, we'll go to data sources, and we're going to say create data source. Uh, now, we can name this anything we want. I'm just going to call it the art of war. You can give it a description if you like. I'm not going to give it one. And as you can see here, you can upload different types of files. Uh, PDFs, text, Excel, uh, CSV, etc. I'm going to say upload files, and then I'm going to find uh, the art of war. Why is it not letting me do it? Man, we are getting all kinds of things here. You guys get to see uh, hiccups for some reason. What is up with the art of war here? And while you're troubleshooting that, uh -huh. um, everyone, if you ha if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Just use a Q and a and a colon so we could um, see it easily. Awesome. Yeah, and please interrupt me if there are questions. I'll get to them as well. I want to make this interactive. Okay, so I refreshed it. It seemed there was some issue maybe with network. Uh, so here we go. The Art of War text file. I'm just going to say open. As you can see here, it's uploading it. it it's done uploading it, and now it's doing something called vector embedding. And so it's taking all of this text and it's converting it into vectors, and it's done that. And you can actually see what it's done. It's extracted the text. It took all the text and converted it into these different chunks, as it's called it, so chopped it up. And then for each of these chunks, uh, it created vectors. This is the thing that really represents all that text in vector form. And now we can just say save. And we need to do one more thing is go to this message rules section here and in this data source, choose this data source that we just created. And again, we can go to publishing, just to make this smaller. Uh, I'll call this the art of war. Uh, I'm not gonna change anything else. I'll even like re leave this here, by the way, these are like instructions for this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. And here's again, the art of war now digitized. And so I can open it, it says, hello. I can say hello, or I can start asking it for a summary. It says, I'm Sun Tzu, how may I be of service? And I could say, summarize the key points of the book. And it'll go and it'll reference the book in this case, not its knowledge of the book that it's crawled before in training of, in this case, Anthropic Claude. But this is using the data that we actually provide it to it. So we can do that. And we can say, make it for a, you know, seven year old kid. And so it can paraphrase this, although this is already pretty simple, but let's see what it, what it does with that. Or we can do all kinds of other things. Again, we can say, you know, uh, respond in French, translate it to French, uh, or we can do as it's thinking, let me start writing some other stuff. See, Key points for a seven-year-old. The book was written by a very smart man named Sun Tzu who lived a long, long time ago, etc. And so I can say, create a go-to market plan for a sneakers brand utilizing insights in the book. And so it can do things utilizing the knowledge of the book. Now, you could argue that the art of war should not be writing a go-to-market plan for you. But you can actually get some like really interesting stuff here. Again, competitive analysis, know your enemy, you know, uh, appear where they cannot prepare, like all of these kinds of insights that you can do with that. And again, here I did it with a book, but you could do it with a collection of books 
or you could do it with any collection of documents. So you can upload many documents simultaneously, just choose multiple documents, it will upload them and it'll convert them into vectors and allow you to chat with them. So this becomes really, really powerful. Uh, you can also do this with user's manuals, for example, right? User's manuals kind of suck, you gotta go through them. Now you can talk to any user's manual, ask it questions that might not even be obvious from the text in the manual, but the AI can think about things and and you know come up with answers generate answers okay is there a file size limit i want to ask is there a file size limit for um the uploaded not, not documents? this time not really uh i mean we've uploaded some really really large files i wouldn't give it like a terabyte that won't accept that but you can certainly give it uh you know megabytes and maybe even gigabytes of of content um, okay great okay uh, so let's actually, okay, so, so far, Marshall, does this make sense to you? And is this helpful? And do folks have yes. other questions of where we might go? Yes, no, this this makes sense. I did have a, a question, though. Um, for those who may not be familiar with the different models, could you just give like a brief description mm -hmm. of like the main difference between something like ChatGPT and Claude? Mm -hmm, for sure. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing here for a moment. Yeah, so um, so all of these are known as large language models, and they've all been trained on uh, mostly public content that's been available uh, on the internet. So various websites and comments and blog posts and and you know all the other stuff that you can find uh, online and some other proprietary data sets, perhaps that the creators of the model, the trainers of the model, had access to. Uh, OpenAI. Anthropic and Google, these are the three providers we support today. Again, now six models from them are all somewhat similar, but depending on the types of things you're doing, you may prefer one over the other. And so it becomes an experimentation thing. It's really easy to experiment because again, you just use that drop down and choose a different model when you're developing it and your AI and just chat with it and see which one you like more. Some are a bit more verbose, some are a bit more which by the way, you can correct that by saying to it, be more precise, less verbose, et cetera. But again, this sort of becomes uh, something that you can play around with. A major difference between the models today are the Claude models, the anthropic models, have a larger, what's known as uh, context window uh, or you know, token window. And so you can give it a lot more text. And so they support uh, 100,000 tokens right now, Claude one and two support that while the OpenAI model supports 25,000 tokens. So if you have a lot of text that you're working with, it's good practice to use at this moment the Claude models versus uh, the other models. But we expect all of that to normalize and, and these context windows actually not to be an issue uh, moving forward at all. Awesome, awesome. So the tokens, are they like queries or is it like how do they Think tokens of tokens work? as being uh, parts of a string, parts of words. And uh, so 100,000 tokens is somewhere around 75,000 words. And so okay. like that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, great, well, let's continue. Let me show you maybe some other things. We can just open some of these up instead of creating them and then I'll also create the analyzer for you as well. Can you see my screen again? Yeah, we can see. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go to this, actually, again, let me quickly sort of take you to the store. So there are uh, over 2000 AIs here already, as I said, here's a bunch of AIs for social media creators and you know content production writing, there's 38. It's over, oh, there's 20 AIs for parents. I'm about to show you this parenting co-pilot, uh, education, business, you know, job seeking, everyday life, coding assistance, health and wellness, you get the point, travel, fun, characters, yada, yada, yada. Let's take a look at this parenting co-pilot. So uh, Marshall, I know you're a parent, I'm a parent of five. Uh, parenting is a, is a job uh, and you can be good at it and you can be bad at it. And some parents uh, are awesome and they read many parenting books and go to parenting classes and have parenting mentors in all of that. I don't have time for any of that. So I decided to use my knowledge to build a parenting co-pilot. I'm about to show you how I built it. 
It took about five minutes to do. You will now be able to build a co-pilot for anything you can imagine. If you run a pizzeria, you can build a co-pilot that helps you run a pizzeria. You know, GPT, Claude, et cetera, have a lot of information of what it takes to run a pizzeria. And it can be available for you in your pocket because obviously you can use all of these on mobile devices. You can add them to your home screen because these are just web applications. You can bookmark them. And so you can just tap a button and you have a parenting co-pilot in this case in your pocket. So I'm gonna say open. As I already taught you the first time you use a, a one of these, it can have these onboarding prompts, personalization prompts as we call them. In this case, it only has one prompt and it says list the first names of your children and their year of birth, one per line. And so these are my kids, Diego born in 2014, Una 2015, Noah 2018, and then I have twins, Ozzy and Tova, that were born in 2022, okay? Uh, and that's it. And once you've done that, the question the co-pilot asks is what's happening? And in this case, I wrote Diego's pushing Noah, Una's upset about it, what should I do? I'm just gonna make this a little bit larger. And it says calmly intervene, separate the children, this will stop the conflict. Acknowledge each child's feelings. Diego is probably pushing because he's frustrated, or upset about something. Noah is likely feeling hurt or scared. Una might be upset because she cares about both her siblings, doesn't want them to be upset. Uh, tell them that it's okay to have those feelings. Ask Diego to apologize. This will teach him responsibility. Uh, discuss with him appropriate ways to express his feelings. Reassure him. This is amazing. This thing understands age dynamics that I don't understand yet and is able to advise me instantly on these dynamics, right? Or in this case, Noah's crying, doesn't wanna to go to sleep because Diego gets to stay up later. Diego is four years older than Noah. Uh, and this says, you know, children often don't understand why rules are different for different age groups. Explain that he's older, needs less sleep, create a special routine for Noah, uh, reassure her that when she gets older, her bedtime will change too, be consistent, blah, blah, blah. Noah has a bad cough all of a sudden, it can help advise how to deal with coughs. In fact, we have things, we have another thing called the AI medic that can help diagnose you with a disclaimer that this is an AI and not a professional physician. We also have an AI um, pediatrician that is specialized in diagnosing kids. We have an AI veterinarian that is specialized in diagnosing uh, you know, animals, and that, that's amazing. Uh, or Tova starting to walk, but seems to be favoring her left, left let, right? So again, you can misspell things and AI can understand. Okay, so this is an amazing killer app. Uh, let's take a look at it. We can click here. And again, because I made it, I can view analytics and I can edit it. And so what does this have? On the left-hand side, it has this personalization prompt, list the first names of your children and their year of birth. Yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger to show you this prompt. Assistant is a parenting expert that utilizes all of its knowledge about parenting children and acts as a coach advisor. Uh, the assistant utilizes its knowledge of parents' children uh, displayed in this variable here called context. Again, context is the data that comes from all of these personalization prompts here. You can literally just pass it in here like this. Assistant interacts with parent in a dialogue where parent provides situations they're experiencing. Assistant provides guidance. Assistant keeps advice concise and friendly. Assistant only engages on the topic of parenting. And because we're using dates here, right? Like it needs to understand what date is today. ChatGPT and Claude were trained at a certain time and struggle with calculating dates. But if you pass it the date, in this case, this variable called current date, again, you can find it in here. Uh, and um, this lets it know what today's date is. And uh, then there's no automations here. Now let me uh, zoom out here. This uses GPT-4 and then that's it. And then you publish it and that's it. So again, all you needed to do here was get the dates of birth of the kids and write this prompt or just copy and paste it. By the way, a lot of the AIs in our explore tab here allow you to, if you click here, to remix them. See? And so you can take that if you find those. You see, this one's got a bunch of these personalization prompts. It's got a bit more of a preamble. It's a bit more structure where it says tone style of 
and voice of assistant and things like that. This one has a bunch of automations. So we just made a copy of this. And so now we can customize this copy for ourselves, change its name, and voila, we have something you know, altogether new. So a lot of the AIs in our AI app store here allow remixing. You can also turn that off on your own AI. If you go to publishing over here, access and sharing, you can turn it off. This one is off by default because it's priced. By the way, this is also where you can set it up that people pay for access to this. You can make it free or give it a fee for a subscription and do that. Does this make sense? Yup, and we got a couple questions. Okay. Um, let me switch the scene. I can't hear you. I lost your sound. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me now? Now I can. Okay. So Link um, asked a couple questions. The first one, he says that he feels like it only permits the building of one use case apps. He says, why are users' answers to personalization questions permanent? Um, can you tweak those afterwards? You can. Yeah. You can always go back to uh, that personalization screen because it's it's right there on the top and change them. Okay. And so yeah, so that's another thing maybe I should set up here. Let me uh, quickly share my screen uh, again okay. and uh, and clarify this. So if we go back to um, our AIs here and we look at this uh, simple summarizer that we made, not so simple because we added this. One is we can open published. And again, when we say open, you can go back to this personalization screen and say, I'm 54 years old. Uh, and, and so this will maintain that state for you, but you can always switch it and change that. The reason I put this here, how old are you, versus uh, I could have gone in here in automations and created another uh, automation here, for example, uh, let's put it here, and I could say collect input and I could use text and I could say, how old are you, okay, and call this age. I could take this, I could delete it, okay, and so we're gonna modify this. And here uh, in send message uh, for the user of age, and here I'm just gonna put age, uh, right, or user reader, it doesn't matter what you put. So why, and so again, this will work as well if we publish this thing we open it. Uh, now we have no personalization prompts here at all. Uh, when we create a new thing, how old are you? And again, here I can say, you know, I'm five. And then uh, here I can paste the URL in again. And oops. And do it this way. So both of these will work. But the other pattern is a better pattern for things that don't change. See, article summarized for a five-year-old. Some Republicans in Congress don't want Jim Jordan to be speaker, blah, blah, blah. So this is that kind of language that would make sense. Other they doesn't know what Republicans are and things like that. But um, so the difference between putting it here in these automations versus putting it here in this onboarding is things that don't change very often, like your age. Especially if you said, what's your year of birth or what's your date of birth? So you never have to change it again instead of how old are you? They belong in this personalization section and things that change frequently belong here. I'll give you another example that I think showcases this well. Let's go back to explore apps and let's take a look at this personalized kids bedtime story. Uh, first of all, let's uh, play with it. Uh, what should the story be about? Uh, we can say uh, Burning Man Festival. We just went to Burning Man. Uh, how many words should it be? 500. Uh, are there any other words you should include? Marshall. Okay. And so now this thing is going to go and write a story utilizing a bunch of things. Now, what is it utilizing? It's utilizing those things we just entered. What should the story be about? Burning Man Festival, how many words? And it'll include Marshall in here. But as you can see, it also has a boy named Diego, uh, Pokemon, Sonic the Hedgehog. He had these siblings. Where's it getting that? It's getting it in here. So these are these personalization prompts. 
my kids' names don't change. And so this one says, what's your child's name? If there are siblings, what are their names? What are your kids into? Pokemon, karaoke, Sonic the Hedgehog. What are some of their first names of their friends? And from then on, all you need to do is enter, you know, the three things that it needs in order to write a story for them, right? So that's the difference between using automations and using um, uh, the personalization prompts. Onboarding or operations, you know, recurring operations. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we got another one from Link. He says, um, it's a UI UX question. He says, why can't the app builder have more options to set how it appears to users? Is that something that's, um, is that upcoming? Like more personalization, customization options for the way the, I guess the landing page and everything looks? Uh, yes, uh, we are two months into uh, doing this. And so we're innovating really quickly. Marshall, you and I joked before this call for a moment that even as you've been playing with it, things have just been changing. And so chances are when you play with this, your interfaces might change as well. Um, and, and so we're constantly sort of expanding it. Let's go look at, uh, again, let me uh, find uh, some more AIs here that are a bit more filled out. So this is clever content. Uh, so it's got the subheading, as you can see, it's $5 a month. It has a video, you know, that the creator recorded, and so we can play the video uh, here. Uh, it has, you know, a, a filled out uh, page here. It has uh, a bunch of images here, etc. And so you can use that, uh, or you can. You don't even have to use this landing page at all. All of these things have a use state, and so you can link directly to uh, to this to the AI itself and never see the landing page. So you can create your own landing page if you want uh, and, and then just go directly to this or you can embed this use state directly in your website. And so if you want more customization on it, you can do it that way. This too is getting redone. So this is about to look much nicer. Uh, literally in the next week, we're launching updates for this consumer experience. Uh, so you'll see a bunch of changes there. And also there are some other things that, again, we haven't really gone into here. But if you go to automations, if you click on here, this end block, right? So there's like this beginnings block. Then there's like any number of these other blocks that you can put here. And then you basically have this ending block. Now, the ending block here can be not just chat. That's the one we've been showing. Uh, but it can be an editor. And so you can have uh, a rich text editor that allows you to basically create things that are collaborative writing assistance. And so you can, you can uh, it, it gives you output and then you can highlight things and say, revise that or change or, or you know, uh, restate that or expand on it, et cetera. So you can do that. Um, this data source explorer is awesome when you're dealing with books or documents. It will show you the actual text of the book that you just encoded. And, and, and uh, when it's referencing that, it'll show you the exact page and the content on that page. Or you can just end the session. This is typically used for generators where they just have an output and doesn't have any kind of a chat interface for it. So again, you can create actually many different types of AIs already that have nothing to do with chatting, that have to do with writing and, and editing documents or understanding you know, very complex uh, data sources, um, or again, just generating content and then stopping and saying, okay, generate more content. So all of these things are available here for you guys to, to play with. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, I lost you again. Okay. So it looks like link has a, a ton of questions. Um, we, I told him I'd ask as many as possible, but I awesome. directed him to the and Discord. And Link, you can contact me directly afterwards, and I will happily answer all your questions as well. What, what are some of the other ones? Okay. Um, let me scroll back up. Uh, so one of them was about an automations. Why can't a builder put anything before personalization? And why can't, can I create a new personalization prompt box? 
Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. What would be before personalization? Personalization is simply the first time user experience when they show up and use your AI. So whatever you would put before it, you, you could put into it. And if for whatever reason, you know, our prompt builders, we call it, doesn't support it, you know, let us know. We'll, we might be able to extend its capabilities to fit that. So I'm not sure what it is that you couldn't put in there for now. Okay. Um, and let, let, let us know how he could reach you. Should he just join a discord and reach out to yeah, you discord, via that? Discord is the easiest way to do it. And therefore we can capture it and, and do it there. Okay, great. And he asks, um, I can't, I create a new personalization prompt box. So is that you, you can add additional prompts in a personalization box, right? That's right. Yep. You, you can add as many as you want. Again, I've seen some that are over 30, uh, personalization prompts before you get to use the AI. Awesome. Okay. Um, yep. So he's going to join the discord. Okay. And, and UAI commented as well. And discord, she directed him to discord hangouts Fridays. Oh, that's, that'll be, that's, that's a great resource. Discord hangouts. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Share screens, ask questions. Yeah, guys, if you're watching and you have, you have questions we, we aren't able to get to, cause I know we're, we're getting ready to wrap up, definitely join the discord and I'm a part of it. And the team is super responsive and helpful. And it's cool to see everybody kind of figuring things out together. Um, so yeah. And like Dimitri said, this is still very new. It's only a couple months in, and even the past few weeks that I've been involved in doing my research and my video that I put out, a lot of things have changed and improved at the same time. So um, it's really, really cool to see. Um, but what other questions do we have? Um, let me just check in. ICAST mm -hmm. says, uh, you're my friend, our genius. This is amazing. <laughs> Thanks for this interview, Marshall. No problem. No problem at all. And I, like I mentioned in the vlog and last week's video, I'm going to be doing regular videos on UAI and I'm going to be building my own AI apps. I have a ton of ideas and stuff that I know will be helpful for my audience. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can tune in to see those live videos and then the, um, the other tutorial video videos that I'm going to be creating. Um, let me see. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. Uh, let me, let me just check my own notes. Um, okay. Okay. So about how many, um, apps AIs are they, are there on the platform now, Dimitri, do you know? Oh, oh yeah. Over 2000. Yeah. Uh, okay, over 2000. So there are now hundreds being added every single week. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's accelerating and, and as we get more people trained and in making AIs, you know, I warn you, this, this becomes a bit on one hand, almost like addictive. We've heard people say where uh, they, they now learn to use a hammer and everything they look at, like looks like a nail. Uh, and, and so there are people who've built, um, now businesses on top of this. Um, there's a, a place called academic insight slap. Actually, maybe I'll. I'll quickly show it to you and, and promote them. Um, they've done uh, an amazing job in uh, and, and are generating revenue uh, right now on their own. So you can see it right here. So this is a it's a consultancy that uh, works with uh, higher education. These women here, uh, higher education institutions, helping in a bunch of ways. They have a new t section here called AI tools uh, and. These are all AIs that have been made uh, with Mind Studio, and they are all available for you to use uh, for $59 a month. And, and so they've got people that are paying $59 a month to get access to all of these. There's over 60 of these AIs that they've created for you know, dissertation feedback, manuscript writing and feedback, teaching assistants, research assistants, uh, a bunch of things here that are like really, really interesting. And so as, as I was interviewing, uh, one of the women behind this, uh, she was saying uh, that she was on vacation and like right in the middle of being at the beach had to stop and build an AI while, <laughs> while she was on, on the beach, because again, once you get the idea, you're like, oh, I can just build this thing now. So if you have like a, a computer or a tablet around in a few minutes, you can get it out of your head 
and 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 paste it there. So two weeks ago, I talked to her. They had 30 of them. I just talked to her on Friday and I said, oh, these people have 30. And she's like, oh, no, we have over 60 of them now. And so we see this pattern a bunch of people, once they understand how to build it, realizing that everything needs to be built. Another way of looking at it is like, if you were a software developer in like 2009, when the app stores were becoming a thing, uh, and you knew how to write code, you could show up and you could sort of build apps for everything because everything needed an app. Now there's over 3 million apps in each app store. Well, we, you know, with this Mind Studio, it's like we're in 2009 again. We have a measly 2,000 AIs. There should be millions. Somebody needs to build them. Every industry and every job function needs a co-pilot. We've got maybe a dozen co-pilots so far. <laughs> there need to be tens of thousands of co-pilots. Go build it. For whatever profession you're in, like UX, great. People should be building UX co-pilots. This thing can help. In, in UX or whatever, any other function. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we had a couple more questions. So someone asked, uh, did I understand correctly that we could resell these apps as white label? So UAI answered, yep, you can resell these, more white label features coming soon. And then Una asks, um, can the conversation end in other ways or just chat? Uh, it can. That's what I was pointing to in this last uh, screen share that I did, where you can control that end block and you can uh, end it in an editor, a rich text editor that allows you to collaboratively work with AI and, and change things and, and highlight things and say, rewrite this or expand on this, et cetera, or in the ability to uh, collaboratively analyze a data set or a document. And so, yeah, it doesn't have to be chat at all. Chat is just like one type of interface. By the way, there's many more, you know, coming soon. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, this is extremely informative, Dimitri. It's got me excited all over again, and I didn't think I can get any more excited about <laughs> building my own AIs. Um, yeah. But do you have any final thoughts, any, any uh, last words for the viewers? Yeah, so one, I'm super excited that you uh, after this session are now trained, I should give you like a certificate of, of being able to build AIs and troubleshoot AIs. We had like a bunch of problems earlier in this that, that we were able to troubleshoot. I showed you the debugger, which I typically don't get to demo, but here you could see that's where we found out that we were getting blocked by that pop-up, et cetera. Uh, and so I'm excited to see the AIs you create. Um, I'm also excited for anyone that's watching this video, again, play around with it, jump into our Discord. Uh, we are there uh 24 hours a day we've got people uh uh you know across the world that that are in that discord and so uh, we're extremely motivated to get all of you guys to be extremely proficient ai creators because it's in everyone's best interest in our best interest so you guys can create many ais in your best interest because you can be you know you can go do your business and and do it better and solve your own problems or go and make it a business and solve problems for your customers or consumers or whatever so we're uh we're super motivated to work with you guys and level all of you up so you become proficient and become evangelists for the service again the service is really just starting we're two months into it uh already with over 2000 ais but still just starting and so uh excited to have everybody join us at so early in our evolution Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Dimitri. I sincerely appreciate it. Um, this was a ton of fun and yeah, guys, please click the link in the description to head on over to UAI Mind Studio to build your own AIs. And just to answer someone's question that said that they didn't see the, my, my URL string when they click the link, don't worry about it. That's just for analytics. I'm not getting paid per click or anything like that or per sign up. Um, so go ahead over there and, and sign up for free and get started. I'm pumped up and now I'm officially trained. So I'll be building my own AIs and uh, yeah, guys contribute to the community or just pop, pop on over there to use some of the AIs to get familiar with it. And don't forget, you can always remix certain AIs. If they aren't paid, you can remix those and start from there so you don't have to start from scratch and if not you can use the scaffolds as well so um yeah i appreciate everyone for tuning in thanks again dimitri and we'll thanks see you guys in the next video peace yeah.